Hello and welcome to another Albion Online Dev Talk. Paths to Glory has now been live for about a month, and many of you have already made very good progress on your journal completion. We've been monitoring the update, and despite seeing a few things we're going to improve here and there, we're pretty happy overall. In particular, the rebalancing of the roads of Avalon has made them far more competitive with the mists, which has led to a sustained increase of activity in the feature. Both PvE and PvP playtime in the roads is up, which shows how the time invested in rebalancing and reworking the feature benefits various different player groups. We also believe that having more players active in the roads of Avalon will make using them as a transport route more challenging, which will benefit the overall risk and reward balance of hideouts. So what does this mean going forward? We're continuing to push for one game update per season. And for our next update, we've set our sights on updating the open world. Similar to what we've done with the roads, we want to improve the attractiveness of playing the open world in comparison to the mists by rebalancing its rewards, reworking some content, and adding new features. Our key goals for the open world are increase its attractiveness for solo players, make mid-sized group content more rewarding, increase player activity in the inner outlands, offer more challenging and rewarding PvE. So how do we plan to achieve those goals? To make the open world more attractive, we're planning to add new PvE objectives for solo players. In addition, we're working on new mechanics to bring you deeper into the outlands more quickly, reducing the risk of getting ganked near portal cities. For group content, we're primarily planning to boost the rewards for group random dungeons, whilst making sure grouping up to play these is worthwhile. We'll also take a look at other group content, of course. To increase player activity in the inner outlands, we're planning to boost PvE rewards and difficulty based on the cluster quality. So clusters in the innermost outlands would contain some of the highest value and highest challenge PvE in the game. This should lead to higher quality clusters becoming more competitive and reducing competition for PvE content near the portal cities. To offer more challenging and rewarding PvE, we're planning to revisit the power curve for open world and random dungeon mobs. Essentially, while the player power has consistently been improving with the addition of elite levels, the mastery bonus, new enchantment levels, additional specialization bonuses, and awakened items, the mob power hasn't been adjusted for a very long time. What we're looking to do is to increase the power of higher tier mobs whilst simultaneously increasing their rewards which would finally bring back some higher-end PvE to the open world. Because most of these improvements affect the Outlands, we're also considering some changes on the Royal Continent, which would make some Tier 5 and Tier 6 content available in the Blue and Yellow Zones respectively, expanding the content new players can explore before taking a deep dive into Albion's full loot PvP zones. In addition to this focus on the open world, we're of course working on other things too. We're planning to further extend the journal with two additional categories. We're also working on a more customizable HUD, savable settings presets, which you can switch between using a hotkey, and we're developing additional inventory management options, as well as other convenience features many of you have been asking for. Of course, we're also working on the next batch of crystal weapons. Finally, we're working on technical advancements like improving the rendering performance of the user interface and upping the cheat protection for the game to ensure a fair playing field now and into the future. All in all, we're pushing further on our mission to make Albion the best sandbox MMORPG out there. Thank you for watching, thank you for playing, and stay tuned for more Dev Talks. In the meantime, if you have anything you'd like to ask, or want to draw our attention to, please leave a comment and we'll address the most popular questions in a future video.